Pension credit is a tax-free, means-tested benefit aimed at retired people on low incomes and can be worth thousands of pounds a year. Plus, if you claim it, you can access a whole raft of other benefits, including council tax discounts and free TV licenses for over 75s. However, around 850,000 eligible households don't claim, often because they don't know they can or that they need to. If you're over state pension age on a low income and live in the UK, you can be getting an extra £60 a week in pension credit, meaning that pension credit can be worth £3,000 a year on average. Because if you're over state pension age, live in the UK and earn less than £182.60 a week as a single person or £278.70 a week as a couple, then the main element of pension credit tops up your income to those amounts. Pension credit is also a gateway to free TV licenses and much more. Those who claim the main part of pension credit can get discounts on other bills such as council tax reduction, which is worth about £1,000 a year typically, and the warm home discount, worth about £140 a year. Pension credit is not automatic, so you must claim. You can apply via gov.uk if you've already claimed your state pension, and you can also do so over the phone via the pension service telephone number. Both the official website and the official telephone number are in the description box below for you, and today I'm going to show you how to apply via the website. So here we are on the official gov.uk pension credit website. So pension credit gives you extra money to help you with your living costs if you're over state pension age and on a low income. Pension credit can also help with housing costs such as ground rent or service charges. So other help if you get a pension credit. If you get pension credit, you can also get other help such as housing benefit if you rent the property you live in, support for mortgage interest if you own the property you live in, a council tax reduction, a free TV license if you're age 75 or over, help with NHS dental treatment, glasses and transport costs for hospital appointments and help with your heating costs. So we'll click on eligibility and as it states here, you must live in England, Scotland or Wales and have reached state pension age to qualify for pension credit. If you have a partner, you must include your partner on your application. You will be eligible if either you and your partner have both reached state pension age and one of you is getting housing benefit for people over state pension age. A partner is either your husband, wife or civil partner if you live with them or someone you live with as a couple without being married or in a civil partnership. So your income, when you apply for pension credit, your income is calculated. If you have a partner, your income is calculated together. So pension credit tops up your weekly income to £182.60 if you're single or your joint weekly income to £278.70 if you have a partner. Even if your income is higher, you might still be eligible for pension credit if you have a disability, you care for someone, you have savings or you have housing costs. So what counts as income? Income includes state pension, other pensions, earnings from employment and self-employment, most social security benefits, for example, carer's allowance. And what does not count as income? Not all benefits are counted as income. For example, the following are not counted. Adult disability payment, attendance allowance, Christmas bonus, child benefits, disability living allowance, personal independence payment, social fund payments like winter fuel allowance, housing benefits, and council tax reduction. A very important point to note is that if you're entitled to a personal or workplace pension and you have not claimed it yet, the amount you'd expect to get still counts as income. If you've deferred your state pension, the amount of state pension you would get is counted as income. You cannot build up extra amounts of deferring your state pension if you or your partner are getting pension credit. And finally, your savings and investments. If you have £10,000 or less in savings and investments, this will not affect your pension credit. If you have more than £10,000, every £500 over that £10,000 counts as £1 income a week. For example, if you have £11,000 in savings, this counts as £2 income a week. Next up, what you'll get. So pension credit tops up your weekly income to £182.60 if you're single or your joint weekly income to £278.70 if you have a partner. You may get extra amounts if you have other responsibilities and costs and the top up and extra amounts are known as guarantee credit. If you have a severe disability, you could get an extra £69.40 a week if you get any of the following, attendance allowance, the middle or highest rate from the care component of disability living allowance, the daily living component of personal independence payment, armed forces independence payment, the daily living component of adult disability payment. 
And if you care for another adult, you could get an extra £38.85 a week if you get carer's allowance or you've claimed carer's allowance but are not being paid because you already get another benefit paying a higher amount. If you and your partner have both claimed or are getting carer's allowance, you can both get this extra amount. If you're responsible for children or young people, you could get an extra £56.35 a week for each child or young person you're responsible for. And this is increased to £66.85 a week for the first child if they were born before the 6th of April 2017. That child or young person must normally live with you and be under the age of 20. If they're 16 or over and under 20, they must be in or accepted for approved training such as foundation apprenticeships or a course of non-advanced education. For example, they're studying for GCSEs or A-levels. If they are in education, it must be for more than 12 hours a week on average. And if you get tax credits, you cannot get this extra amount of pension credit for caring for a child. However, you might be eligible for child tax credits. And if the child or young person is disabled, you could also get an extra amount of either £30.58 a week if they get DLA, PIP or ADP or £95.48 a week if they are blind or they get the highest rate care component of DLA or CDP or the enhanced daily living component of PIP or ADP. If you have housing costs, you could get an extra amount to cover your housing costs, such as ground rent if your property is a leasehold, some service charges, charges for tents and site rents. The amount you could get depends on your housing costs. And if you get pension credit, you could also be eligible for council tax reduction, housing benefit if you rent the property you live in, or support for mortgage interest if you own the property you live in. If you have savings or a second pension, you could get the savings credit part of pension credit if both of the following apply. So you reach state pension age before 6th of April 2016, and you saved some money for retirement, for example, through a personal or workplace pension. You'll get up to £14.48 savings credit a week if you're single. And if you have a partner, you'll get up to £16.20 a week. You might still get some savings credit even if you do not get the guarantee credit part of pension credit. And here's some other help if you get pension credit. If you get pension credit, you automatically get cold weather payments. And you'll also be eligible to get help with NHS costs such as prescriptions, dental treatment, glasses and transport costs for hospital appointments as well as applying for a free tv license if you're aged 75 or over and here's some handy information as well to figure out how much you could potentially get using the gov.uk pension credit calculator as well as all the contact details for the pension service how you're paid all benefits pensions and allowances are usually paid into an account for example a bank account next up how to claim. So you can start your application up to four months before you reach state pension age, and you can apply any time after you reach state pension age, but your application can only be backdated by three months. This means you can get up to three months of pension credit in your first payment if you were eligible during that time. So you'll need the following information about you and your partner if you have one. So you're going to need national insurance number, information about any income, savings and investments you have, and information about your income, savings and investments on the date you want to backdate your application to, which is usually three months ago or the date you reach state pension age. So we're going to shortly be applying online. And as it states here, you can use the online service if you have already applied for your state pension. I'm going to be assisting my mother in applying for her pension credit as she is already in receipt of her state pension. We're going to click on apply now. So information you will need to apply online. You will need certain information about yourself and your partner if you live with one while you make your application. If you do not enter anything for more than 30 minutes, your application will time out and you will have to start again. This is to keep your details secure. You cannot save your application and come back later. That's really important. So make sure you have everything to hand so you're not spending time looking for it because this will time out after 30 minutes and there is no save function here. You'll just have to start all over again. Make sure you have everything prepared and ready in front of you and it should be a fairly seamless process. And please note that this is a service for new pension credit applications only. And if you are already getting pension credit, you should be calling the pension credit telephone number to tell them about a change of circumstances. Moving on, do you have the right information to make an online application for pension credit? So you will need for you and your partner, if you live with one, national insurance number, details of income and pensions, and details of money, savings and investments, usually for the last three months. So we have that ready, we're going to tick the yes column and then click on continue. 
First up, which country do you live in? So we live in England. We're going to select that option and click on continue. How we will use your information, as well as the details you provide in your application, we will also use information we already hold about you and your partner if you live with one. We'll use information that we already have about your state pension and any benefits you receive and that we get from HMRC about your income and earnings. All right, so we'll click on continue. Right up, so we enter our date of birth here for my mother. So we're gonna put the day, month and year and go ahead and click on continue. Next up, what is your nationality as shown on your passport or travel document? My mother's a British citizen and holds a British passport. So we're going to tick the first option, British and continue. Following that, do you have a partner? So if you live with a partner, their details must be included as part of your application. A partner is a husband, wife, civil partner, or someone that you are in relationship with. So in my mother's situation, she is married and lives with her husband in the same household. So the very first option, yes, we live together, is going to be an option for her. We'll select that and click on continue. So we click on yes, we live together and then it expands. So what is your partner's date of birth? We're going to enter her husband's date of birth here and then click on continue. Does your partner agree to you making this application? We already consulted with her husband and he was happy for this application to be made. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the yes icon and then click on continue. What is your partner's nationality as shown on their passport or travel document? So my mother's partner, her husband, is also British and holds a British passport. So we're going to select British and click on continue. So tell us about your UK pension. Of the four options, my mother is already receiving her UK state pension. So we're going to select the top option, I am receiving my UK state pension, and then click on continue. Next question is, have you been outside the UK for a period of more than four weeks since 21st of January, 2022? In our scenario, we're going to click on no, and then click on continue. So do you want us to consider backdating your application to 21st January, 2022? Because of the time of this application, based on your circumstances, this is the earliest date we can consider backdating your application to. If your circumstances have changed since 21st January 2022, you might want us to consider your application from the date that change took place. For example, if you have been part of a previous claim for pension credit or started or stopped living with a partner, we're going to go with the first option, which is yes, consider my application from 21st January 2022 and then click on continue. So what is your national insurance number? It's on your national insurance card, benefit letter, pay slip or P60. And the easiest way we're finding my mother's national insurance number is on her benefit letter. It's printed on the top right hand corner. We're going to enter it and then click on continue. Next up, what is your name? Use your full name that is shown on official documents. Do not use abbreviations or nicknames. So I always recommend going by, if you have one, a UK passport or UK driving license. So in this occasion, we're going to use my mother's British passport and copy and paste the information as it appears in that document. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on continue. The next question is, are you registered blind or severely sight impaired? And in my mother's situation, she isn't. So we're gonna go ahead and tick no and then continue. What is your partner's national insurance number? So this time around it's asking for my mother's partner, her husband, his national insurance number. Again, we're gonna lift that from his benefit letter and copy and paste it into this field and then click on continue. And what is your partner's full name? Include any middle names. So just like we've done for the main applicant, my mother, we use her British passport and how her name appears in that to copy and paste the information in. We're going to do the same thing with her partner's full name and use the name as it appears for him in his British passport. Type it into this box and then we're gonna go ahead and continue. Then it asks, is your partner registered blind or severely sight impaired? And just like my mother, we're gonna go ahead and click no and then click on continue. Have you or your partner had any overnight stays in hospital between 21st January 2022 and today? Neither of my parents have been in hospital overnight. So we're gonna go ahead and click on no and then click on continue. So do you live permanently in a care home? For this option, we're gonna click on no and then continue. My mother, along with her husband, both live in rented accommodation. Right, so what is your home postcode? We simply enter the home postcode and then we're gonna click on find address and it will automatically populate. So it's already found a selection of addresses that match the postcode. We're just gonna use the drop down option from the 25 addresses, find our address and then click on continue. 
Are you or your partner responsible for paying the rent or council tax for the place where you live? This includes if they are paid through housing benefit or council tax reduction. So here we're going to click on yes and then continue. Following that, which best describes the place where you live? So from the options that we are presented, my parents are in rented accommodation and then we're gonna click on continue. So do you pay ground rent? You might pay ground rent if you are the leaseholder of your home. My parents aren't leaseholders of their home. So for this question, we're going to tick no and then click on continue. Do you currently get housing benefit or a housing payment from Universal Credit? If you are not sure what type of help you get with rent, check your award notice or benefit statement. So in this scenario, my parents get housing benefit. So we're going to tick the first option and then click on continue. Are you or your partner responsible for any children or qualifying young people who live with you? Children are under age 16 and a qualifying young person is age 16 to 19 and in non-advanced full-time education or training. So here we're going to click on no and then click on continue. Does anyone else who is over 18 live with you and your partner? Their employment status and income might affect how much pension credit you could get. So it's just my parents living in their house alone now. So we're gonna tick the no option and click on continue. Does anyone get carer's allowance or the carer's element of universal credit for looking after you or your partner? My parents don't have any carers, so we're gonna tick no and click on continue. And have you or your partner applied for any benefits that you are waiting to hear about? You do not need to tell us if you have applied for housing benefit. There aren't any outstanding applications for benefits for either my mother or my father, so we're going to tick no and then click on continue. Do you or your partner have any income from employment? You do not need to tell us about any pensions from previous employments. For this question, we're going to tick no and then click on continue. And have you or your partner had any income from self-employment since 21st October 2021? Again, we're going to tick on no and then click on continue. Non-UK pensions. We need to know about any non-UK pensions you or your partner have paid into, including ones not taken yet. This includes non-UK personal pensions, non-UK state pensions, non-UK workplace pensions. Have you or your partner paid into any non-UK pensions? My parents haven't paid into non-UK pensions, so we're going to tick the no option and then click on continue. UK personal pensions not taken yet. So we need to know about UK personal pensions you or your partner have paid into but have not taken yet. Personal pensions are pensions you have set up yourself. They are sometimes also called private pensions. You do not need to tell us about your state pension or any other pensions currently in payment. So have you or your partner paid into any UK personal pensions that you have not taken yet? For both my parents, the answer is going to be no. We're gonna go ahead and tick that option and then click continue. Other regular income and payments. We need to know about certain types of regular income and payments you or your partner receive. This helps us work out exactly how much pension credit you can get. Tell us about maintenance payments from a former spouse or civil partner, work where you or your partner are paid cash in hand, royalties, awards or payments relating to a personal injury, payments from a trust, strike pay. Do not tell us about attendance allowance, personal independence payment, or carer's allowance. So the question is, do you or your partner receive any other regular income or payments? And in both of my parents' situation, they do not. So we're going to tick no, and then click on continue. Tell us what accounts or investments you and your partner have. Select any that apply. Current savings or deposit accounts with a bank, building society, credit union, or the post office. My parents do have that. We're going to tick that option. Investment ISAs or cash ISAs. They don't have those. National savings and investments products, such as premium bonds or savings certificates. They don't have those. Shares, don't have those. Money invested in unit trusts. Nope. Income or capital bonds? No. Money at home in cash? Yes, so we're going to take that option as well. Money overseas? Nope. And other accounts or investments? So from this list, the ones that apply to my parents are they have a current bank account and they have cash at home. So we're taking those two options and we're going to click on continue. You want us to consider your application from 21st January 2022. This means we will ask you about any money, savings and investments for two separate dates today and the 21st of January, 2022. 
and you click on continue. So money you and your partner have today. If you have money that is shared with someone other than your partner, only tell us about the amount of money that belongs to you and your partner. You should include the total you have in current savings or deposit accounts with a bank, building society, credit union, or the post office, and money at home in cash. So what is the total amount of money you and your partner have today? Enter an amount in pounds and pence. So what we're going to do, we're going to add up and have a look online at the bank account for my parents and then just have a quick count of cash that is in the home today add it all up and then enter it into the box and click on continue so total amount of money you and your partner have today is a confirmation of what we entered in the box previously and then it's also written out long form then it asks you have you entered the right amount so we're going to go ahead and tick yes and then click on continue we now need to know about the money you and your partner had on the 21st of January 2022. If you had money that is shared with someone other than your partner, only tell us about the amount of money that belonged to you and your partner. You should include the total you had in current savings or deposit accounts with a bank, building society, credit union or the post office and money at home in cash. So what is the total amount of money you and your partner had on the 21st of January 2022? Again, we're going to enter an amount in pounds and pence. The easiest way to do so was to, again to look online on our bank account and then look at the date to correspond with the 21st of January and then entering that same amount in and then clicking on continue. Once again, we get confirmation. So the total amount of money you and your partner had on 21st of January 2022 is spelled out for us as well. And have you entered the right amount? Again, we're going to go ahead and tick on yes and then click continue. Next up, do you or your partner own any property or land? My parents don't. So we're going to select the no option and then click on continue. Your nationality. Do you have the right to live or work in the UK without any immigration restrictions? You have this right if you have a British passport or are a British citizen or British subject with right of abode. So yes, my mother holds a British passport. We're going to tick yes. And have you lived permanently in the UK for the last two years? Once again, we're going to tick yes and then continue. Then we we'll ask the same question for her spouse. So does your partner have the right to live or work in the UK without any immigration restrictions? Yes, he does. He also holds a British passport. And has your partner lived permanently in the UK for the last two years? Again, we're going to tick yes and then click on continue. So which of these best describes you? You are applying for pension credit for yourself. You are a friend or family member who is helping the applicant make the application. You have power of attorney for the applicant. You work for a charity or organization that is helping the applicant make their application. You have been appointed by DWP to deal with the benefits of someone who cannot manage their own affairs. You are a corporate acting body for the applicant. You are a personal acting body for the applicant or someone else. Mother's making the application herself and I'm just sat here beside her. So she's going to tick, you are applying for pension credit for yourself. And then we're going to click on continue. The quickest way for DWP to contact you is by phone. So we might need to contact you about pension credit, either while we are processing your application or once it is in payment. We might also need to contact you about other benefits that you might get now or in the future. Do you have a contact telephone number? My mother does, so we're going to tick yes, and then it will expand and we'll enter the telephone number that we would like to be contacted on, and then we're going to click on continue. So what language do you want us to speak to you in? We're going to select the English option and then click on continue. Do you need us to use any different formats when we contact you by letter or phone? For example, braille, large print or text phone. We don't in this scenario, so we're going to tick no and then continue. What address should we send letters to? Your home address or a different address? The home address is fine, so we're going to tick that and then click on continue. Should we send an email to confirm you have submitted an application? Yep, we definitely want confirmation of the application submission. We will tick yes and click on continue. I highly recommend getting confirmation of the submission, so certainly do select yes and provide an email address if you have one. And is this email address correct? So we're just making sure there's no typos in the email address. Yes, use this email address for the confirmation email as the selection. And then we're going to go ahead and click on continue. So check your answers before sending your application. We've got a nice summary here of each section and the answers that we've provided to the questions. We're going to give it a good read, make sure there's no typos, no errors, and that we're happy with the answers that we've provided. And once we're happy, we're going to proceed further. So we're just going to scroll through each section here. So we've got applicant details, partner details, time spent in hospital, housing details, other people that live with you, benefits, employment and income, money, applicants residency in the UK, partners residency in the UK, contact details, 
And at the bottom it states, if you are happy with the answers you have given, you can either print them out or save them to your computer, tablet or mobile phone. And if you change anything, you will need to print or save a new copy. So we're for sure going to go ahead and get ourselves a copy saved to our computer. We are going to click on save a copy of your answers and download that PDF and keep it in a safe place and then click continue. So submit your application. By applying, you agree that the information you've given is correct and complete as far as you know. You'll pay back any money you are overpaid if you're asked to, and you could be prosecuted or have to pay a financial penalty if you deliberately give the wrong or incomplete information or do not report changes. So we understand that, and we're gonna go ahead and click on submit. Great, so application sent. Your reference number is your national insurance number. What happens next? We are doing some final checks on your application and we will contact you by the 25th of May 2022. We will contact you by letter if we can award your pension credit. And if we need more information, we will contact you by phone if you have provided a contact number or letter if you have only provided an address. If your application is successful, we will pay your pension credit into the same account as your state pension. You will be able to change this to a different account once your pension credit is in payment. If anything changes, so while you are receiving pension credit, you must tell us straight away about any changes that could affect the amount of pension credit you get. Housing benefit. You told us you are currently getting housing benefit. If your application for pension credit is successful, you will continue to get housing benefit as long as you are eligible and your local authority will get in touch if anything changes. Council tax reduction. If your application is successful, you might be able to claim council tax reduction you should contact your local authority to apply. Carer's allowance. You might be able to claim carer's allowance if you care for someone for 35 hours or more a week. And then you finally get the option to print or save this page. And there you have it. That's the application from start to finish for pension credit. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please give it a like and share it with someone else that you think might benefit from it. Do subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. If you have any questions or comments, leave them for me below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.